The recent crypto market pump took many by surprise, and particularly surprising were the coins and tokens that pumped the most. Among the top 100, Aptos and Solana stuck out as two of the biggest gainers. Now, this is no coincidence considering that these crypto projects are very similar. Aptos has even been branded the Solana killer, and this has left many wondering which will win out in the end. So today, I'm going to compare two of the fastest, most funded, and most controversial cryptocurrencies on the market and tell you which one has the most potential. I'll begin by saying that nothing in this video is financial advice. It's just educational content that's meant to assist you on your crypto quest. Also note that I do not hold APT or SOL as part of my personal crypto portfolio. You can find out which cryptos I currently hold using the link in the description. Also in the description, you'll find links to my most recent videos about both projects, which will give you some background on each one, should you need it. That said, here is a super quick TLDR for those unfamiliar. So, Solana was founded in 2017 by Anatoly Yakovenko with the purpose of replacing centralized stock exchanges like the Nasdaq with a decentralized blockchain. This is still Solana's goal, though it has dabbled in other niches such as NFTs and crypto payments. Solana was built by Solana Labs, which is based in the United States, and its ongoing development is coordinated by the Solana Foundation, a nonprofit based in Switzerland. Its mainnet went live in 2020, and much of its ecosystem funding came from FTX and Alameda. Aptos, meanwhile, was founded in late 2021 by Avery Ching and Mohammed Sheikh, both of whom previously worked at Facebook. They say Aptos technically began with Facebook's failed crypto project called Libra. Now, Libra was born in 2017 and died as DM in 2022. While it's likely that most of Aptos was built by Facebook, Aptos Labs is the software company credited with Aptos's actual creation. Aptos Labs is based just outside of San Francisco, and Aptos's ongoing development is coordinated by the Aptos Foundation, a nonprofit based in the Cayman Islands. Unlike Solana, Aptos doesn't have a clear crypto niche or use case. This could be a consequence of it being so new, or a sign that it intends to do it all. Aptos raised $350 million across two token sales in 2022. Lead investors included FTX and collapsed crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital, among others. Aptos's main net went live in October 2022, and the launch was controversial. You can learn more about that using the link in the description. Now, under the hood, Solana uses a proof-of-stake blockchain that can process up to 120,000 transactions per second. However, FTX documentation notes that Solana's current TPS is between 2 and 3,000. Considering that Solana was FTX's de facto exchange chain, it's likely these figures are correct. Regardless, Solana's speed is made possible by the novel components of its proof-of-stake consensus, notably proof-of-history, which timestamps all Solana transactions. Solana uses its own Solana virtual machine for smart contracts, and these smart contracts are coded in the Rust programming language. The Solana blockchain is currently secured by roughly 2,300 validators. The caveat is that all transactions are processed by groups of up to 150 validators called Solana clusters. Now, Solana's website suggests that these clusters currently consist of just 30 validators, which is quite centralized. Not only that, but it appears that Solana still only has a single validator client. In plain English, all Solana validators must connect to a single service to interact with the blockchain. This presents a single point of failure, which has contributed to Solana's outage issues in the past, along with spam transactions, of course. And as a centralized cherry on top, Solana validators only store the most recent transaction history on their hardware. Solana's long-term transaction history is stored on Google Bigtable, a centralized server. If anything were to happen to this long-term transaction history, there could be big problems. And speaking of validator hardware, Solana is notorious for having some of the highest validator requirements of any cryptocurrency. Current hardware requirements to run a Solana validator essentially require having a data center, and that's before 
all the soul that needs to be staked. Though there is no minimum soul stake, the amount of soul that a validator needs to stake to break even is sizable. Luckily, soul can be delegated. Solana staking rewards are currently around 7% per year with a five day lockup for validators and delegators. Misbehaving validators are slashed, so watch out. As for Aptos, it uses a delegated proof of stake blockchain that can process up to 160,000 transactions per second. But of course, Aptos's current TPS is much lower. According to a December interview with Avery and Mohammed, Aptos can currently process between 2 and 5,000 TPS. Aptos's speed is made possible by its own novel delegated proof of stake consensus mechanism, which is honestly outside the scope of this video. Now, another significant contributor to Aptos's speed is its relative centralization. The Aptos blockchain is currently secured by a little over 100 validators. The silver lining is that these 100 or so validators seem to be storing Aptos's entire transaction history, which could change as the blockchain grows. At least Avery has been vocal about making Aptos's middleware decentralized. For example, making sure there are multiple validator clients. Even so, hardware requirements for Aptos are also quite high. Now, what's concerning is that Avery has avoided questions about hardware requirements for validators increasing as the blockchain becomes faster, even though Aptos's documentation suggests these requirements will, in fact, increase. Now, like Solana, Aptos uses its own virtual machine for smart contracts. If I understand correctly, the Move VM was invented by DM's developers along with the Move programming language, which is based on Rust. Coding in Move on Aptos is reportedly easy, whereas coding in Rust on Solana is not. What's annoying is that the staking requirements for Aptos aren't entirely clear. As far as I know, delegating APT is only possible using a liquid staking DeFi protocol called Tortuga. APT staking rewards are 7% per year with a 30-day lockup. Validators on Aptos are currently safe from slashing. Now, you can learn more about the pros and cons of liquid staking by watching our video about Lido Finance. That will be in the description. Now, in terms of tokenomics, Sol is the native coin of the Solana blockchain. It's used to pay for transaction fees, for staking by validators and delegators, and will eventually be used for the governance of Solana itself. Sol had an initial supply of 500 million, which was distributed as follows. 37% to early investors, 25% to the Solana team and the Solana Foundation, and 38% to the Solana Community Reserve, which is of course managed by the Solana Foundation. Some of you might recall that Sol had one of the most aggressive vesting schedules of any cryptocurrency. All the Sol allocated to investors, the team, and the community was supposed to be released all at once in January 2021, yet this somehow did not affect Sol's price or circulating supply. I suspect that Solana's biggest backers, including FTX and Alameda, came up with a way to ensure that early investors got their money's worth without crashing Sol's price. I say this because FTX and Alameda were holding around 15% of Sol's total supply when the two companies went under last November. Sol's total supply currently sits just shy of 540 million, with much of it being concentrated in the top Solana wallets. It's not entirely clear which wallets belong to the Solana team or the Solana Foundation. It's also not clear whether any Sol that's still vesting is allowed to be staked. In any case, Sol has no maximum supply and its inflation rate is scheduled to decline from 8% down to 1.5% over the next 10 years. 1.5% will be Sol's final inflation rate. Because 50% of all Sol used to pay for transaction fees is burned, this means that Sol could become deflationary with enough adoption. When it comes to Aptos's tokenomics, APT is the native coin of the Aptos blockchain and it's used to pay for transaction fees, for staking by validators and delegators, and is also used for governance of Aptos itself, though this governance is currently limited to validators. APT's tokenomics were released shortly before APT listed on exchanges. This is one reason why Aptos's launch was controversial. The Aptos team has since promised to update APT's tokenomics 
but it still hadn't happened at the time of shooting this. As the facts stand today, APT had an initial supply of 1 billion, which was distributed as follows. 13.5% to early investors, 35.5% to the Aptos team and the Aptos Foundation, and 51% was set aside for the Aptos Community Reserve, which is, of course, managed by the Aptos Foundation. Note that the wallet addresses for these entities are also not noted on any explorers. As you can hopefully see, most of the APT in circulation for the first year comes from the Aptos Community Reserve, with a small amount coming from the Aptos Foundation and from staking rewards. Note that some of the APT from the Aptos Community Reserve was airdropped to the Aptos community. Sometime later this year, APT will begin the most aggressive portion of its vesting schedule, wherein its entire initial supply of 1 billion will be released over the course of roughly four years. This aggressive vesting schedule peaks at the end of 2026, which could be the top of the next crypto bull market. It also seems that the data on CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko about APT's supply is incorrect. They note APT's circulating supply is around 160 million, while Aptos Explorer suggests that APT's circulating supply is around 180 million. It's important to note that APT's tokenomics specify that vesting APT can be staked. As I mentioned earlier, APT's inflation rate is currently 7% per year. This inflation rate will fall to 3.25%, and APT's tokenomics specify that this inflation target will take 50 years to reach. If that wasn't eerily similar enough, 100% of APT to pay for transaction fees gets burned, again forecasting future deflation. You can learn more about how tokenomics affect a crypto's price action using the link in the description. Now, this is the part of the crypto comparison video where I'd pop open a few price charts and speculate on how high these cryptos could go. Unfortunately, I can't do this for Sol and APT. This is simply because both cryptos could crash hard due to bankruptcy selling by FTX and Alameda. So instead, I'm going to give you a fundamental analysis of Solana and Aptos that will tell you much more about Sol and APT's future potential than technical analysis tea leaves. The tokenomics effectively covered the source of supply for Sol and APT. So this leaves the demand drivers. Now, based on my experience, the best way of seeing how much demand there is for a cryptocurrency is to check how many times its most popular wallets have been downloaded, how many active users its decentralized applications have, the total value locked in its DeFi protocols, and its developer activity. Solana's most popular wallet is the Phantom browser extension, which has over 2 million downloads on Google Chrome alone. I should note, that Phantom raised a whopping $109 million from various crypto VCs early last year and is in the process of expanding support to other blockchains. I should also note that the number of Phantom wallet downloads is the same as it was when we last covered the project in November, after FTX's collapse. What's encouraging is that data from DappRadar suggests that Solana's monthly active user count has since stayed steady at around 300 to 500,000. What's not so encouraging is that the total value locked on Solana's DeFi protocols has fallen so far since November that it's falling out of the chart provided by DeFi Llama. This makes sense considering that FTX and Alameda seem to have been providing lots of the TVL, which now stands at $265 million. Solana's developer activity is where things get insanely bullish for Sol. If you watched our video about Electric Capital's developer report for 2022, you'll know that Solana was the second largest crypto project by active developers after Ethereum, with over 2,000 people working on Solana projects. Now, you might think many of these developers abandoned Solana after the collapse of FTX and Alameda, but Electric Capital's data for 2022 extends to December. This suggests most of them stuck around. The best part is that the number of developers has historically stayed the same during crypto bear markets. The only issue is runway. FTX and Alameda had invested in almost every major Solana project, including Solana itself. Anatoly has confirmed that Solana Labs has enough runway to last for another year and a half, but the same can't be said 
for most Solana projects, and some have already started switching blockchains. It's a similar story for Aptos. Downloads of Aptos's most popular wallets, the Martian and Petra browser extensions, have stayed steady at around 500k and 300k respectively. What's odd is that the number of downloads was much lower during my research, but have since returned to their October levels. Hmm. What's even more odd is that data about Aptos's decentralized applications doesn't seem to be available. Thankfully, the Aptos Explorer lets you see the number of daily active wallets, and it currently sits at around 20k. Now, this is 20x less than the number of daily active wallets on Solana, which is around 400k. This is consistent with the surprisingly low total value locked on Aptos's DeFi protocols of just over $60 million. Now, this is where I need to issue a quick correction. In our previous Aptos video, I speculated that some vesting APT was being staked on Tortuga. I misread the TVL figure. It's 10 million, not 10 billion. Anyway, last but not least, we have Aptos's development activity, which has likewise been surprisingly lackluster. The Electric Capital report revealed that Aptos only has around 250 developers working in its ecosystem, 10x fewer than Solana. This is consistent with the fact that Aptos has roughly 10x fewer dApps than Solana. The edge that Aptos has over Solana is that it probably has a lot more money to spend on development. The apparent ease of building on Aptos versus Solana could therefore result in many Solana developers leaving for Aptos. Then again, Solana isn't the only competitor that uses Rust to build dApps. And now for the big question. Which crypto project has the most potential, Solana or Aptos? Well, I'll start by reiterating that the short-term future for both crypto projects is very uncertain. This is, of course, again because of the close connections they both had to FTX and Alameda Research, and then some. Besides all the Sol pressure Sol and APT are likely to face, Solana and Aptos will both experience severe regulatory scrutiny. In Solana's case, it will be because it was the de facto exchange chain of FTX. In Aptos's case, it will be because it's the continuation of the Libra crypto project created by Facebook. If you've watched any of our videos about crypto regulations, you'll know that the reveal of Facebook's Libra in 2019 caused governments around the world to panic. Imagine what will happen once regulators realize that Aptos is a continuation of Libra under a different name, as per the admission of the founders. Now, regarding the factors I covered in this video, Solana arguably has a superior background compared to Aptos. This is in part because Anatoly's experience with and understanding of computing hardware is exactly what you need when building a fast cryptocurrency. Anatoly has also been building Solana since 2017. By contrast, Avery and Mohammed's experience and understanding has more to do with software and marketing. This works well in an environment where all the hardware is taken care of by a big tech company like Facebook, but it doesn't work so well in crypto where hardware is the real hurdle. Moreover, I'll repeat that it's unclear how much of Aptos's development was actually done by Aptos Labs. Most of the crypto software Aptos leverages was built with the billions that Facebook poured into Libra. This building may extend back to 2017, but the teams aren't the same. And remember, SUI exists too. It's also hard to compare exactly what's under the hood. I suppose the most important component is decentralization, in which case Aptos takes the cake. The only problem is that the details about Aptos's decentralization aren't available, and Aptos is still much more centralized than the average crypto project. Tokenomics is where Aptos takes the L. To be blunt, Aptos might be the only cryptocurrency with worse tokenomics than Solana. This is mostly due to the lack of transparency, but it's also because so much of APT's supply is held by Aptos Labs and the Aptos Foundation. Better than FTX and Alameda, I suppose. Now, the final factor is adoption, and this is where things get interesting. Solana clearly has much more adoption and development, but most of this adoption and development was thanks to FTX and Alameda, which are no longer around. Some would say that Solana's adoption has peaked as a result. 
Conversely, Aptos is only just beginning to see adoption and not just from individuals. Aptos's close connections to big tech have attracted the attention of Google and others. It could start to see some serious big tech integrations, which could, ironically, result in even more regulatory scrutiny. That said, Solana has seen similar interest from institutions and has already secured partnerships with Instagram and Facebook for NFTs. Solana is also the official blockchain of Circle's USDC stablecoin, which is on track to become the largest by market cap. Solana will likely benefit from this inevitability. Still, there's no denying that Aptos is extremely overvalued relative to Solana. Solana's market cap currently stands at $9 billion, only around 3x more than Aptos's actual market cap of $3 billion. This is despite Solana having 10x more developers and 20x more daily active users. Food for thought. In sum then, Solana has the edge over Aptos in the short term and possibly the medium term, notwithstanding some issues related to FTX and Alameda. In the longer term, it's too soon to tell, but Aptos appears to be perfectly positioned to secure the partnerships needed for mass adoption. Solana, not so much. But... That is just my opinion, and I would love to get yours in the description. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel to get more crypto content like this. I will see you folks in the next one.